Hey, we're Annie Jennifer Smith with Marriage After God. Helping you cultivate an extraordinary marriage. And today we're going to have fun and answer 10 random questions so that you can get to know us better. Okay, so this is a fun, um, don't look, weird uh, episode. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, I'm super nervous. So what we did is we wrote down five questions questions and the other person does not know what the questions are but here's the thing guys you have okay, not seen these i haven't seen i haven't seen your questions you I haven't have not seen, seen my, yours and here's the thing i like to be prepared for our podcast i don't like to not be uh saying things off the cuff or like you know put on the spot and so you know my cheeks are probably already red i don't know but. so we're gonna answer these as we hear them <laughs> okay i'm gonna start i'm gonna read you a question <laughs> off my card and you have to answer it. Oh my gosh, okay. This is pretty much just truth or truth. There's no like, <laughs> there's no dares okay. involved. We should do a truth or dare episode. <laughs> okay, so you, are you ready I don't for know. question No, I'm not ready. <laughs> number one. I told them, I said, just don't. Okay. Hold on, question I got, I, hold on, I got to tell them. I, I, I said, um, or you asked, are, you, are we going to do a theme or anything with these? Are there yeah. boundaries? Nope. Yeah. We're just going to ask whatever we ask. So these might be super okay. random. Question number one. What is... 4,628 divided. What? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> math. I'm not doing math on the spot. Oh my goodness. Okay. All right. For reals. Okay. If you have six watermelons and three of them have no seeds, if the other three have. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> That's these are not the questions. Math. These are not the questions. Question. That was a word question, though. It's like a word okay. problem. Um, I hate it does. This is the real question. Maybe I should go first. <laughs> this is the real question. Okay. What is your favorite fast food and why? <laughs> oh, okay, my favorite fast food. That's a good question. I know. So here's the problem is we've been eating less and less fast food over the um, years. But you, I think you. I think you have um, some secret dirty... Do I? Okay. So you guys, the truth is, um, there's this place called Del Taco. It's a magical place. <laughs> um, I don't recommend it, but <laughs> um, there is there is the you know 69 cent red burrito with sour cream that is really good. It's pretty specific. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, and why is the second part of that question? I don't know why. I just, I grew up on Del Taco. Okay. I remember being a child and... My mom, you know, would walk us down the street on Friday night to get Del Taco. and So it's nostalgic. Yeah, but it's good. <laughs> but it's not good. <laughs> it's a good nostalgia. It's so good. It's so bad. <laughs> it's so good. It's so bad. Okay, thanks for that question. Third random piece to that question. What? Is how many do you get of these 69? Two to three. You have to. <laughs> you can't just have one. Why would you ask that? <laughs> okay, thanks for putting me on the spot. Okay. Um, so mine actually happens to be food as well. Oh, to start off. a lot no. of this going to be food? Uh, no, just this one. Mm. What is your favorite type of dessert? Ooh, okay. Oh, easy. Oh. I like uh, <laughs> pudding textured desserts. Okay. Creme brulee, mm -hmm. uh, creme de pote, mm -hmm. or pote de creme. Pote de creme. It's one of those. It's like a chocolate pudding, but oh, it's so super good. thick. <sighs> Ganache stuff. Ganache. Yeah. <laughs> um, frosting. <laughs> brownies. You'll, you'll straight up be at uh, frosting. Chocolate shakes. <laughs> a chocolate uh, malted shakes. Chocolate malted shakes. Chocolate, malted shakes, uh, chocolate I, chip cookies that Just are so everyone knows, I actually hate that he always gets malt <laughs> because I always want to try some of his shake, but I don't like malt. I can't just do a shake. you got to get the malted powder in there. I don't even know what it is. <laughs> I know. But they put it in. <laughs> I always think of mothballs. I don't know why. Moth? It has nothing to moth do with ball? mothballs. I know. <laughs> I know. Can I get the chocolate mothballed shake, please? <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. Okay. Ask me number two. That's a good one. <clears throat> Question number two for me, for you. If you had three hours to do whatever you wanted and money didn't matter, what would you do? Oh my goodness, that's a good question. Mm. Um, <laughs> the first thing that comes to my mind is just like a spa day by myself, getting a massage. <laughs> In the dark, in, in the, the dark. quiet, <laughs> cool, dark. Yeah. A three-hour massage. That's three, what three I would hours, do. Three hours straight. You, you wake up at the end of it. <laughs> okay, maybe maybe I do have these massage with pedicure or something like that. That'd be good. That's what I would do. Okay, men take notes. <laughs> All right. Okay, my question oh, yeah. for you is next. Um, be nice, okay? Be nice about this one. <laughs> okay. I don't even know why I'm asking it, but I thought they would like to hear. Okay. What is the hardest thing about doing a podcast with me? 
<laughs> Nothing. It's awesome. It's always rainbows and butterflies. Uh, uh, the hardest thing about doing a podcast with you is when <laughs> when I ad lib and you're not prepared and you just stare at me and you're like and I'm like now they're gonna look for that yeah they get it no we cut that all out <laughs> we just wanted to take a quick break to ask you if you are enjoying this content would you please leave a star review and a comment review this helps us spread the word about marriage after God and and just all the episodes that we have to offer and we would love uh, just to get that reach out there so please again if you have a moment just um, take that time to leave a star review and a comment review for us thank you so much and enjoy the rest of the episode it's makes true. it sound like we're all prepared. But. It's true. Here's the thing is, uh, we have different uh, styles of doing these podcasts where I, I like to just be, gab. Yeah, and I like to be super prepared. And so I'll literally rather so, read so off a piece of paper. We'll be reading a note and I'll be like, so, you know, that one time, what did you think about that? And she's like, I didn't write that down. <laughs> and then I'm like angry. I'm like, <laughs> we have to like start why over. didn't you just answer? answer. <laughs> why didn't you just answer? <laughs> I don't know why I but, get nervous. I know. And I don't know. I As I'm asking you the question, I just think to myself, like, I shouldn't even ask this. She's not going to answer. That's okay. You can keep asking. Yeah. We'll just cut it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I'll say the second hardest thing is we do this during nap time. Mm. And since neither of us can watch the kids, it's like we have this big of a window to do it. Yeah. And so since we have to do it together, yeah. it's just we have to like coordinate perfectly. Yeah. But we've been looking out. <laughs> we haven't missed a week yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yet. <laughs> okay. My question number three okay. for you Good. is this. This is also what has been the hardest. No okay. way. We just think like. What has been the hardest lesson you have learned as a wife? Oh, that's like very big. That's a very big question. What's the hardest lesson? The hardest lesson that I've had to learn. I, I feel like there's so many things that I've learned along the way. Put them in order. Okay. From one. To, I'm just kidding. Um, just I the hardest one. I can tell you one. right off the bat is probably. Um, submission and respect and like you know um just even in little things like when you have it's an just idea it's hard to respect me I get well, it well no but it's, like you'll you'll come really up with hard. an idea for something and I'm so quick to just be like no and like I don't even need to give a reason because I just know in my head like that's not <laughs> how I would do something or yeah because it's not the way you would do it then yeah. I, yeah and it just causes a little bit of contention so so um, are you saying you've learned Submission and respect. <laughs> I think I've gotten better over the years. Okay. I'm still learning it. Which is um, totally honest. And I love I'm that. trying to be obedient <laughs> to the word, you know, and, and let yeah. you lead us and our family and me specifically. Um, mm. And also coming from, um, I have examples in my life of really strong women. You know, I didn't mm. see that exemplified yeah. really well. So I just think that, um, you know, just submitting to you mm. is, is not the easiest of things for me sometimes. Okay. So the question wasn't hardest thing you're still learning. I'm just kidding. That, that's a good answer. Be nice. Would you say though, since you brought that up, yeah. that the more you walk in submission and respect for me and that biblical um, mindset that God wants for you to have towards me, do you see uh, me growing in that area of being respectable, being um, uh, followable? I do. And I think that the more that you you know, uh, continue in your walk of letting the Lord lead you, I trust it more. I, like I trust you more, and um, and I think that mm. the more times that I walk out submitting to you, that um, it becomes easier for my flesh. If that makes sense. Like the yeah. more I practice it, the, the easier it becomes. Um, doesn't mean that there's still some days that are hard, but mm -hmm. I have gotten better at it. And um, yeah. yeah, I just and and I see the benefit too. I see why God put that order in place mm -hmm. um, for a marriage. You know, I, I feel like it's it makes it more possible to have a thriving marriage when there's someone yeah. that's leading and somebody that's willing to come up under and support and follow. Cool. Yeah. Good answer. Yeah. Okay, what's your number three? Oh, yeah. We're asking each other questions, right? Okay, so yeah. number three is, how do you envision our life and family in 10 years? So just to give you a perspective, mm -hmm. I'll be 42, you'll be 44, and Elliot will be about 15. I know. It's really weird. Well, when you, Crazy. why'd you have to go and do that? Sorry. <laughs> I just wanted to give you some perspective. We'll be in our forties and our, we'll have teenagers. So how do you envision our life and family? <laughs> okay. Um, I hope that we're, I pray that we're 10 years mature, mm. not just older, but like mature in the word of God. Mm. 
that as a family we are pursuing his will still and I know we will be um, uh, I would say most of all that we will be um, just stronger and more biblical parents mm. like I, I want more than anything my kids to just love God mm-hmm. and love his word more than I ever did and that we have strong relationships with them yeah and that we have strong so like as a so our, our son who's already given his life to the Lord yeah. I pray that when he's 15 he's like loves the word of God yeah. and, and knows it and well. knows it yeah. And well yeah better than I did you know mm-hmm. at 15 I don't even know how well I, I think he'll it, surpass us I yeah, think that's my heart. <laughs> I, that's my heart. Is that my and I tell Elliot that yeah. I'm like I'm like Elliot. I want you to be like better than me, yeah, and smarter than me, and wiser than me, mm-hmm. and know the word of God better than me. And that's... how many other kids do you think we'll have? Ooh, <laughs> is that a, that's not what <laughs> no, I know. I just add that. Uh, <laughs> I'm just geez. curious. Well, we have one every 16 months. Well, there's we a lot of people. There's a lot of people <laughs> on you, social media. That's that's Listen, 16 children. <laughs> there's a lot of people on social media that keep asking. They'll say like, Jen, you, it feels like you've been pregnant for a long time, which I feel like I have. Um, but yeah, it's every, you know, every year and a half, every two years. They are curious. Those listening want to know, like, I, do we have a number? I don't have a number. Yeah, we don't. Have I a don't have a number. I just want to trust God. And, and I, I love having kids and, and we're going to walk in wisdom with it. And we're going to just pursue God's will for it. And I don't, I don't need to give a number. Yeah. If we have cool. more, we have more. Okay, we'll see in if 10 God years. If God stops it, God stops it. But that's, we're <laughs> just going to Check back trust in him. in 10 years, you'll see. And you'll see how many kids you have. Okay, number okay. four. Go ahead, I'm ready. Not ready, Okay. I'm kind of ready. If you could go back in time. Hmm. Aaron always likes to do time travel stuff. Yeah, I do. Okay. <laughs> we should do an episode on time travel. I know. <laughs> Teach them how to I'm do serious. it. I'm serious. We have, a, we have a, a thing about time travel. Okay. Um, if you could go back in time and tell your 18-year-old self one thing, what would it be? 18... Stop eating red, or red burritos. Stop eating red burritos, yeah. Um, pursue Aaron harder. No, she didn't. Oh, you did know me then. She did know I me knew you, too. and I pursued you because I remember you weren't dating anyone at the time, and I just wanted to be with you. Okay, that's actually when we started dating. Yeah. Um, I think I would tell myself to um, read the word more. To, to build a stronger habit mm. of getting in the word. and I mean, I, I would tell myself that today. I feel like I, I've always had this desire to know yeah, God Yeah, what would more. you tell yourself today? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Open the Bible. I do I do feel like, yeah. and, and maybe it's a, not just a spiritual health, but like also health and fitness. Like, just I would just tell myself, like, start preparing now. Like, go, go to the gym more. Go, Because it would be easier today to do it, because right now it's hard to get into it. <laughs> and, and so I, I wish I built more uh, better habits back then. I think I would tell myself that. I would agree yeah. for myself. Yeah. Like, did oh, I, not for I, me. I, yeah. I would agree. You should have had better. <laughs> um, no, I would have. I, that's probably what I would tell myself to get, like, open the word of God more. Yeah. And keep yourself healthy. Yeah. And build those habits. That's good. Cool. Okay. okay. What's your number four for me? Number four for you is what was your experience like singing in a hardcore band? <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> Say it louder, what? <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> so people probably don't know this about you, so do you want to share yeah, a little bit? I used to be, um, it's where these came from, my holes in my ears. Um, I used to be a part of the hardcore music scene, like heavy metal. And uh, I was in a, a band for a little bit. What was it I, called? What was, what was that band called? <laughs> <laughs> we'll just not talk okay. about that. Okay, okay. It was a fun little season. I had to throw a question in there that would kind of embarrass you a little bit. Yeah, uh, it was fun. Um, I don't even listen to that music anymore, but mm. I, I loved it back then. Yeah. Um, that was my high school years. Yeah. yeah. I should have said screaming instead of singing. Yeah, it was screaming. It was I more would, of like I a... I didn't sing. It wasn't like, la, la, la. Nope. So it was... like, ah. uh, <laughs> I actually went to one of your shows. It was yeah, wasn't crazy. it awesome? Yeah. You, that's when you fell in love with me. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Keep... <laughs> okay. Moving uh, on. Number five. We're coming to the end here. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Okay. This one's a good one. What is your favorite part about being a mother? Oh, that just makes my heart melt because, you know. It's okay. I'm running points just, here. Man. No, it's good. It's a good points. question. We hope you guys are enjoying listening to this week's episode of Marriage After God. We wanted to take a quick break to share with you 31 prayers for my son and daughter. We uh, started out writing the marriage prayer books, but we had a lot of uh, parents asking for prayer books for my son and daughter. And so we made these really neat, 
resources so that parents can pray specific prayers over their children. And there's even journal lines in it so that they can make them personal. And I've heard in some cases, parents um, are going to be handing these books back to their children uh, when they graduate or hit those really awesome milestones. So this is just a really great way to um, inspire your prayer life for your children. So if you're interested in getting more information about the 31 Prayers for My Son and Daughter books, please go to marriageaftergod.com forward slash children and uh, you'll get all the information you need. There are so many things. Again, like th- these are big questions, Just babe. favorite, the number one favorite part. I love holding my children and looking them in the eyes. I just, I love mm. them being close to me. Um, even if that means sleeping in our bed or taking naps with them or <laughs> cuddling them. It never them. happens, ever. Um, when they're randomly playing and they come run up and jump on my lap, you know, I just I I love being so close to them. And it's hard when I'm pregnant and my belly gets too big because I feel like there's this distance of like, I can't get close enough to holding mm-hmm. them. So I I think it's just that being able to embrace young children, I, I just love it. That's cool. Good answer. Yeah. Okay, so... My last one. What is it? This is, yeah, <clears throat> five for Aaron. What one piece of advice would you give to husbands to help them lead their wife better? The same advice I'd give you when you were 18. (laughs) Uh, Say the question again, actually. What is is one piece of advice that you would give to husbands to help them lead their wives better? Oh, okay. Uh, Oh, so there's the scripture that there's the parable of the plank eye. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, it says, how can you get the speck out of your brother's eye when you have a plank in your own eye? And it's this idea you can't see clearly because you got this thing in your eye. Um, so the idea would be lead by example. Mm. So don't be trying to pick at your wife and change her when you are lazy and when you aren't opening the word of God, when you aren't pursuing God, when you aren't being the kind of man that God's called you to be. And so this has been something that I've leaned into a lot in the past few years in leading you is any times I'm like, Oh, I wish Jennifer would change in this area. Immediately, the, the Holy Spirit's like, well, how are you doing that? That's really good. And, so, and you have been leading out in this way. So could give them a couple of examples of how you've been doing this? Because um, I can think of two right off the bat. So if I mm-hmm. desire you to be in the Word of God, mm-hmm. I should be in the Word of God first. Mm-hmm. And it's not about order. It's about like if I'm going to expect my wife to do it, I should be... That should just be part of my life. Mm -hmm. And so before even going to my wife and saying like, why aren't you in the Word of God? Mm -hmm. Like she should be seeing me putting putting my face in the Bible. Yeah. Um, Another thing is fitness. Um, If I go to my wife and be like, I want you to get in shape and I'm lazy and eating and, and, you know, getting out of shape and not caring and have no discipline in that area. I was going to say the discipline that you've had in eating uh, specifically, we just talked about that. Yeah, yeah, has been a huge, has had a huge impact on our relationship and yeah. and your physical fitness and your ability to have energy. And mm-hmm. I've seen the change in you. And I just told you this what like a couple of days ago that it's inspired me to want to mm-hmm. move in that direction and be more healthy in the things that I'm consuming. Yeah, so leading by example because yeah. I'm visible and sh- I'm going to be showing my family like, hey, this is how I want our family to live. Yeah. Um, and so I don't necessarily need to force anything on anyone. Mm-hmm. I can encourage it and I can encourage from a place of authority because I do it. Yeah. Right. That's, and yeah. that's the idea is that's the idea of the plank eye. It doesn't say don't do it. It says take the plank out of your eyes so you can see clearly in your brothers. Mm-hmm. And so I can see clearly into my you know wife's life mm-hmm. by walking the way that I would want her to walk. Yeah. Um, another area is intimacy. I was going to bring that up. Yeah. So like <laughs> if I, um, this was a big shift for me is like, Oh my, my wife's not pursuing me. My wife's not giving me my physical needs. We're not initiating. We're not or, initiating. Yeah. And I felt the Lord say, well, how are you like pursuing her romantically? How are you mm-hmm. making her feel loved throughout the day? How are you touching mm-hmm. her? How are you holding her and encouraging her with your words? And so what happened, the, the most immediate effect that I had on that was, let's say I was com- you know, coming to bed and I wanted to be with you. Instead of saying, hey, let's be, let's together. be together. And you're like, you haven't talked to me all day, <laughs> right? <clears throat> I'll come and I'll, I'll say, hey, can I like give you a foot massage? Yeah. Hey, can I rub your back? And I had to, um, I had to specifically do it with the intention of not receiving anything in return Mm -hmm. because I wanted my heart to be right. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to be manipulating the situation. Now, often it turned into something more, Mm -hmm. but that wasn't my intention. And I would even say like, hey, you don't have, like, I'm not expecting anything. I just want to serve you. And that all often turned into you being like, well, I want to. Well, there's this thing that happens (laughs) when (laughs) when, when you, when I see my husband uh, lead in this way, lead by example and fulfill the things in my life to encourage me and, and serve me, it does stimulate this 
desire to want to do the same thing. It's like the opposite of the reciprocation, the and, chaos yeah. cycle. You know, it's like it's the love cycle. And yeah. so I, I think that's a great piece of advice for husbands. Yeah. So this was a fun little thing. I loved all your questions. I loved yours. Those were great. I was really nervous to do it, but I they weren't too hard. So that we're watermelon not, one was kind of hard. I know the and the, ma- <laughs> the math questions. Don't do math questions on a date night. That's not unless oh, math's like your love language. Speaking of date night, we wanted to encourage you guys to do something similar on your next date night. So you can steal our questions. We you can steal our questions, but the hardcore one might not make sense for some people. Um, yeah. Well, you change that one to be more specific to your spouse. <laughs> uh, but take e- each person take you know time to write out five questions and make it super random and just have fun mm-hmm. um, talking about it and seeing what the other person has to say because it could. this was fun. Yeah. Hey, it. thanks for joining us for this fun episode and we look forward to having you next week. Did you enjoy today's show? Find many more encouraging stories and resources at marriageaftergod.com and let us help you cultivate an extraordinary marriage.